In Creole Parametric, you can insert fittings into your pipelines. Before I start doing that though, let's take a look at one of my fittings. I will switch to a window that has a family table generic open. Be aware that when you're trying to insert a fitting at the end of one of your pipelines, you're going to need to select a datum point and a datum coordinate system. So it's a lot easier if you make sure that those objects are visible at the beginning. So I have a coordinate system called port one and the Z direction is pointing along the routing of the pipeline. And then there is a datum point called near, which I'm going to use to locate the fitting at the end of the pipeline. Okay, let's go back to the first assembly and I will start off by going to applications and then piping. Let's make things easier to see. I will change my model tree to the pipeline view. Let me expand the unclassified group. I'm gonna hide everything except the very first one in the list. I will use the shift key to select all of them and then right mouse click and hold and choose hide. Now I have reduced the screen clutter. Let me turn off my datums for a moment and I'm gonna zoom in where I want to place my first fitting. And let's see, first I need to tell Creo Parametric that I want to continue routing on this pipeline. So I will right mouse click and hold. And here we have the route pipe command. Now I can choose insert fitting and I get the menu manager with four different choices for where I want to insert it. I'm gonna start off by inserting at the end of this pipeline. And now I have my file open dialog box where I will navigate to the file that I want to use. I'll filter down to the family table generic. And here we have all the different instances of the family table. I'm gonna filter down by column. I know that this is a 150 size pipeline and I wanna use this third instance. So you can use the by column tab in order to filter down your choice of fittings. So let's click on the open button and you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to the message area. Right now it's telling me to select a pipe end in the assembly window. And so I'll move to where the end of the pipeline is and then left mouse click. And it's going to open up that fitting in its own accessory window. And it's prompting me to select the entry port in the member window. Let me turn my coordinate system display back on. And here is the coordinate system that I want to use. Now it's prompting me to select the point to align the end. So let's turn off the coordinate system display, turn on the point display, and I can repaint the screen in order to get rid of the display of the coordinate system. And I'll select that point, and it ends up exactly where I want it to be. If you want to change its orientation, you can click on that and you could choose flip if it was pointing in the wrong direction. But now I've got the stipling because my components are overlapping. Let's choose flip again. And if I rotate, I think the holes are gonna end up lining up just by chance in this particular situation. But if they don't line up, you could use the twist option in order to rotate. But everything is good here, so I will choose the done button and then done. And I've got my first fitting in the model. Let me turn off my datum point display. Next, I'm gonna throw in some elbows. So let's go to some of the different corners that I have in my model. And let's go to insert fitting. And this time I'll do it at the corner. By the way, you'll notice there are four choices in here, end, corner, straight break, and straight continuous. Let's go to the next option for the corner. And let me see, I am looking for, I think I can filter down with the letters BW to my family table generic. And once again, I can filter down in the list by going to the size and choosing the correct size that I want. And I'll use the S variation. Let's select the instance and then choose open. And now I'm being prompted to select a corner between two pipe segments. So I'll select that corner. You can see a preview. Once again, we could change the location point or we could change the orientation. This is good, so I'll choose the done button. You can see how the pipeline is adjusted to accommodate the corner that is now displayed. Let's take a look though. Sometimes you might need to change what you have selected for your 
corners. So let me go back to my model tree. I'm going to right click on the one that I have visible and I'm going to hide it. And let's make the second one visible. I think when I was doing that one in a previous video, I put bends in the corners. Let me select this one in order to activate it. Say that I want to do some routing in it. There is this environment command, which I've shown in other different videos. And here is where you can set the default corner type that you want to use for your routing. And I had it set to bend for some of these different ones. So I need to cancel the setting for bend and turn these into corners if I want to put the elbows in there. So let's go to the modify command. And here we have a bunch of different options. For example, later on, I'll change the line stock. You could change the flex shape, parameters, and flow direction. But the default setting is for corner type. So I will select, let's say, this corner here. And I'll hold down the control key and get this other corner. I'll click the OK button. And right now, it's set to a bend. You could also change the bend radius if you chose the wrong value. But let's go to fitting and then click the OK button. You'll see that the geometry updated on the screen. Well, now I am able to put in an elbow in there. Let's go to fitting and then corner. And let me filter down the files in my working directory. And once again, let's go to the correct size for this particular pipeline and choose the open button. And I will select the cor first corner that I want to put it in. That's good. I'll choose the done button and it updates. But that's all I'm going to do for that one. Putting it in at the other corner would just be a repeat of the process. All right, let's continue on. Now I am going to put in a reducer somewhere. So let's start off by selecting this one and I will hide it. Let's grab the last one in the list and make it visible. And I decide that I'm going to have a reducer right here in the middle of this one. And so let's go to the selection, right mouse click and hold and choose route. Now I will choose to insert the fitting. And this time I'm going to do a straight break. So I want to have the pipeline segment cut in the location where the reducer is going to be. So I will choose straight break. And let's see the part that I want. I wonder, if it's, is it in this folder? Nope, it is not. Let me navigate to my folder where I have a bunch of fittings that I can use. Here's the reducer that I want. And once again, I will use the column. And let's see, I'm going to choose 150 for the original size. And let's see, I want steel. I'm going to go down to an 80 size. So that's the instance that I want. I will choose the open button. And then you have two different choices, select point or create point. Well, maybe you already have a point that you used for routing your pipes, but in this case, it would need to be in the middle of a segment. So I don't have a point that I can select, but I'm going to instead create a point on the fly. And so I'm going to create a point. I'll pick approximately over here. And here you have the three different methods for locating the datum point. It can be offset from some given reference, or there's length ratio or actual length. I'm going to use length ratio. That's where it normalizes the pipeline segment between zero at one end and one at the other end. If I enter in a value of 0.5, I will get a point exactly along the middle. And it opens up the accessory window. I'm being prompted to select in the member window, select a point in the member window. Let me turn on my datum point display. Here is the point that will locate the reducer where I want it to be. And right now you can hover over and see how it is going. And I want it going, I want it flipped. I want it uh, reducing in the other direction. So let me choose orientation and then flip. And if I hover over now, it's going the way that I want it to go. And I'll choose done and then done once more. And we have it in there, but now we have the wrong pipeline stock over on the other side. So let's read in the appropriate stock that we want to have. If I go to setup and line stock, let me choose list. And right now we only have the 150 stock in this assembly. 
let's read. And I'll navigate to a folder where I have some line stock stored. Let's grab the 80 line stock and hit done return. And once again, I can use the modify command. Let's change the option to line stock. And now from here, we can choose the lines that we want to replace. So for example, I'm going to want to replace that one and then hold down the control key and grab this other portion here. I'll click the OK button. And then from the drop down list, here we'll choose the 80. I don't know why it's listed in there twice. Uh, let's click the OK button. And I'll turn off my datum point display in order to unclutter things. And let's zoom in here. So in that way, I have my pipeline reducing from the larger diameter down to the smaller diameter. Okay, so that is great for this particular assembly model. I'm going to close out of the piping environment and hop over to another assembly just to show you some more stuff with the straight break and straight continuous. So let's go to applications and then piping. And once again, I will change my model tree display to the pipeline view. Let's expand the unclassified group. And I know it's this one on the end that I want to start making changes to. So I will right click on it and then choose the route pipe. And then I can choose to insert a fitting. And for this one, we're going to put a break in it. And I'm going to put in an assembly this time. Let me filter down to assemblies. And I think it's in this folder. Nope, wrong one. This one, did I put in here? Yeah, here's the gate check valve assembly that I want to use. So I will open it. And once again, we can create a point on the fly. Let's say I want to put it in right about here. I'll use length ratio. And let's use a value of, say, 0.6 and hit the Enter key. And now it's prompted me to select a point. I hope I have the points visible in here. Yeah, I'll use this point here as the end location. And so this time it came in there, and I'm fine with how it is oriented in there, except for the rotation. Let's go into the orientation. If I choose the Flip button, it'll put it over there on the other side. You know what? Maybe I like that better. Uh, but let's add in some twist. And when you choose twist, you have a number of different options. You could set some different references for what is the zero angle. You could choose a line X. But in this case, I can probably eyeball it. Let's try enter value. And I'm going to try 90 degrees from the current location. And, oh, I got lucky this time. Uh, it ended up being correct. But if it ended up being wrong, I could try entering in different values relative to the current orientation and keep on adjusting it until I get it placed the way that I want it to be. So let's choose done and then done once more and done. And we've got this one in there. Again, that was with a straight break. There's another option for straight continuous. And that's a situation where, well, you don't want to break the pipeline. And that would be appropriate in situations where you might want to place supports into your pipeline assembly. So let's try that. Let's insert a fitting. And this time I'll do straight continuous. And let me go to, oops, I wanted to be in one of these folders. Let me change the filter down to parts. And let's see, my part uh, was called support something. Let me see if I'm in the right folder. Yep, here is the support that I created. It is also a family table member. And this pipeline, I think it's a 50 size, and I want to use a height of 200, so I'll select this particular instance. I'll choose the Open button. Once again, I will create a point on the fly. Let's put it right about over here. And then Length Ratio, I'll use 0.25. And now it prompts me to select a point in the actual assembly. Hey, it's rotated incorrectly again. Let's go to orientation and twist. And let me try entering a value. Let's try 90 and hit the enter key. And I can tell from the preview that's wrong. Let's enter in a value again. I'll do 180 and hit the enter key. And now it looks correct. So now I've got my support sitting in there. Let's choose done and done and done. And in that way, we have our various 
fittings placed into our pipeline.